My name is Tim Flack. I'm an animal photographer working from London and I particularly specialise in communicating stories about the natural world. For me what's special is to produce an image that really connects us, that engages. When I started this journey, I hadn't even heard the word Anthropocene. That is, that we're entering an age shaped by humanity. But as I've done projects, particularly like More Than Human, which is a book that looked at the relationship between science and humanity, meeting these scientists who are working on conservation only illuminated that further for me. For me to go and photograph the Yunnan snub-nosed monkeys was definitely an adventure. It meant, first of all, going to Dali and meeting up with a very famous filmmaker. And we ventured up into the high mountains where this particular Yunnan snow monkey lives on lichen on the trees. And they live at the highest altitude of any primate. Extraordinary. This is why they have these flat noses that allows them to survive in, in, in these extremely cold temperatures. They just look like they've had cosmetic surgery, big red lips as well, and so distinctive. And then I spent some time, and after several days, I was just going down a route and not even thinking about the monkey. And there I saw right down there uh, under my feet, and I just was able to turn around and go click and get that portrait that is in my book, which is a close head portrait. I've been to Chengdu on a number of occasions, once to visit the Chengdu research base there. We had this fantastic panda who we tried to persuade her out of a den with a bit of bamboo outside. We had this beautiful black velvet I bought all the way from the UK and put it on the back of the den. And then when she came back in, the first thing she did is she pulled off the dress velvet in front of us and literally ripped it in two in front of us. I thought, oh no, this isn't going to work. But in the end, we got the shot. And the shot looks almost like the pandas doing karaoke. I think it's interesting today when we have Kung Fu Panda, we have many things where Panda is a very, very powerful ambassador for conservation and is the world wildlife symbol. But we mustn't forget that there are many, many animals that had very important symbolic meaning particularly the golden monkey, for example, with the snub nose, and also the red crown cranes, who are to be found in all Asian art and represent long life and fidelity. I've had a number of different exhibitions, from, from Dali to Beijing and back to Kuming, in the museums there. And the curatorship of that was essentially focused around not just having pretty pictures of these animals, but having their story alongside it. I believe in Kuming, in the museum, they invited many of the schools in the, in the area to come, but they told the children, don't bring your devices, bring notepads and write down the stories. For me, that's very rewarding, that the young people are having a chance to think about these characters. My animal portraits often emphasize the personality and the character. It's to bridge the world between nature and us. The Chinese government have and that's how they really want humanity and nature to live in harmony and the objective of 2050. I absolutely share that concept. We must, we have to, to in a sense, seek to find that balance with nature. Our future really depends on it and to, to live in harmony. If we understand the issues, if we can make them connect to everyone in such a way that we truly care, we can bring back those animals from the age of extinction. I'm looking forward to the opportunity to go to Lin Zhou, to the photography festival later in the year, to be able to meet fellow photographers and, and other people who, like myself, are passionate about the challenges of how we create this harmony with nature, how we look for an intergenerational approach, a long-term perspective. My pictures are about making them relatable, giving them personality,
character, making them anthropomorphic sometimes, so they look quite human. But are they human? No, they're just presenting themselves like they're sitting in a portrait, being a supermodel on the day. And in that sense, the research I've done with social scientists has revealed that this is more powerful in bridging that relationship. We're talking about the importance of connecting people to nature. And that by making the story of those animals relatable, and you see another sentient being, we want to do something that lead to pro-environmental outcomes, that lead to making an impact for the better. For most of human history, we have looked at nature as robust, and almost us as fragile. We sit at a time when we humans have impacted and changed and shaped the planet to such a degree that our very, very future comes into question. So for us, we have to rethink the frameworks that we've worked with, whether that's in many different fields, and literally rethink and plan for a future of harmony with the natural world. <laughs>